ADOS dude, ADOS dude, there was an ADOS dude named Bill something. Bill the icon. Bro, bro. We're all in dirty laundry. Defiant. Even after being convicted and sentenced to 150 days in jail and 30 months of probation. Unrepentant after a 30 plus minute legal dressing down by the judge presiding over his case, who referred to him as a narcissistic charlatan. What can be said about Jesse Smollett, the gay Tupac, that hasn't already been said? He's a fraud, a huckster, a spoiled and coddled Hollywood brat whose social capital and political connections have allowed him to remain smug and impudent regarding his, in my opinion, ill-conceived and very diabolical crimes. Ill-conceived in that on its face, Smollett's story sounded bogus from the beginning. The uh, attacker uh, masked and he said, this MAGA country punches me right in the face. So I punched his ass back. And then um, we started tussling, you know, it was very icy. And we ended up tussling by the stairs, uh, fighting, fighting, fighting. There was a second person involved who was kicking me in my back. And uh, then it just stopped. What celebrity goes out during a polar vortex in Chicago in the wee hours of the morning for a foot long? Diabolical due to the overarching implications concerning Smollett's true motives for staging this sloppy hoax and for who else might have been involved others with power and influence behind the scenes. We all saw how Cook County State's Attorney, Kim Fox, who after a grand jury returned a 16 count indictment against Smollett, allowed him to walk free with all charges dropped after he agreed to forfeit his $10,000 bond and to complete some community service. That wasn't all she did for Smollett, however. After she symbolically recused herself from the case, Kim Fox continued to share information with Smollett's family after having been contacted by another Chicago lawyer, former First Lady Michelle Obama's Chief of Staff, Tina Chen, who provided a member of Smollett's family with Fox's phone number. Chen, also a close friend of then mayor Rahm Emanuel's wife, reached out to Fox just three days after Smollett called 911. So it looks like this rabbit hole goes deeper. You heard the names, Michelle Obama, Tina Chen, Amy Rule, Rahm Emanuel's wife, a virtual who's who of Chicago-based power brokers seemingly all coming together to grease the wheels of the justice system to assist Jesse Smollett. Let us not forget about Senators Cory Booker and Jesse's bosom buddy, Kamala Harris, who called the so-called crime a modern-day lynching. They both hopped on the clout train, attempting to use the heat generated by this apparent hoax to sell, get this, their anti-lynching bill, which, ironically, was finally passed by the Senate three days before his sentencing. But it looks as if we may never know what Smollett's real motives were, as he defiantly proclaimed his innocence as he addressed the judge. No, I would just like to say to your honor that I am, uh, I am not suicidal. 
That's what I was trying to say. Okay. I am not suicidal. Okay. I am not suicidal. I am innocent and I am not suicidal. If I did this, then it means that I stuck my fist in the fears of black Americans in this country for over 400 years and the fears of the LGBTQ community. Your Honor, I respect you and I respect the jury, but I did not do this and I am not suicidal. And if anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself. And you must all know that. I respect you, Your Honor. I respect your decision. Jail time. I am not suicidal. Okay. And pumps his fist in the air while being led away by deputies. And we will probably never know who else is tangled in the web of lies spun by Smollett. The Osandario brothers, extras on Empire, and personal acquaintances of the actor were but pawns in Jesse's game. Smollett used them, but the question remains, who used Smollett? Why did Smollett express fear for his life at his sentencing? Jesse proclaimed that he was not suicidal and that if any harm came to him while incarcerated, that it would not be by his own hand. Was this a case of mere theatrics or is this a sign that a more sinister, dangerous force is at play? Would Smollett, facing a short stint in jail, become a liability to his handlers and meet an Epstein-esque demise in his cell? We'll chalk that one up to another question we will not know the answer to or not anytime soon as it stands Jesse Smollett is now a free man out on appeal bond one day shy of one week into his 150 day sentence and from reports we understand that much of that time was spent in a psychiatric ward another victory for Smollett it seems but at what price?